So on the last video, I broke down all the Kickstarters I had uh, purchased in 2018, was expecting in 2019, and Nemesis was on the way. It arrived. While I was waiting, there was another channel that used to be pretty good at painting things, and it was fun to watch, but then they started switching to this opinion piece and just crapping on everything from Awaken Realms. And I didn't think it was fair, and in order to show you why it's unfair and what you really get in the box, I took a stab at it and tried to set up the camera and my little paint booth, and I hope this gives you some information as to what you can do specifically related to what Awaken Realms uses as like a Zenithal priming they call Sundrop. I opened my Lords of Hellas and to my surprise I got a Adrestia. I have no idea how that relates to anything but if Lords of Hellas is a future version of ancient Greece mixed together then it might make some sense that they have aliens. And that's what Adrestia is. It looks like one of the Carnomorphs from Nemesis. And it was really nice to get it free as a thank you for backing the Kickstarter of Lords of Hellas. And as you can see here with the Nemesis figure, it's pretty much the same thing. The sun drop is not present on the Carnomorphs here. I forget if I just didn't buy it or if they didn't offer it because uh, it's pretty simple to do on your own and that's what we're gonna try to show you right now. I'll give you a few more turns here just so you can get an idea of what it looks like and uh, as you can see hey looks pretty good especially when it's blown up a bajillion times there's not a lot of seam lines the base looks pretty cool and uh, they made some improvements on the model itself uh, from the Adrestia one. One of the biggest problems that I had was the previous base was really flimsy and if you had received that flimsy base you would have been really upset. You can see here it's all warped and it bulges in the center. I'll set it here on the uh, Lazy Susan in just a second and show you that uh, it, plastic's totally different. It looks like it was made out of a black plastic before and now everything's gray. There you go. A little bit of wobble. You really wouldn't be all that happy but Awaken Realms saw that there was a problem and hey now it's nice and stable. It's made out of this hard gray plastic and in general it's pretty good. You can see what the two of them are like next to each other and the challenge is going to be matching the Zenithal priming sun drop look. And you can see there's a blue. It's a little on the turquoise side. Maybe it's got some green in it. And there seems to be a black undercoat. And above the blue, they hit it with another white. So that's the challenge we're going to try to make. I've got a box of paints. And we'll just see what we can make from what I have. And speaking of what I have, here's a quick breakdown of all the stuff that I use all the time. I use a lot of Vallejo. There's a little bit of Badger in there. You can use whatever you want. Uh, I put some links with the Amazon affiliate codes to go to these exact products. If you choose to use them, it'll help me out. But there is no expectation from you guys to pay for anything on my channel or do any of that kind of stuff. I don't get funded by anybody. And I like to keep my integrity intact to be able to do that but hey if you want to support the channel you can't find the stuff might as well click on the links makes it easier for you i put links to everything i use including the gloves the mask i use the little paint booth and the different airbrushes i use right now you see the patriot model from badger it's uh okay my favorite is the velocity jet but it's for a little fine detail. And I also am going to use one called the Crescendo because it just spits paint like crazy. And we're going to do a lot of priming and fine detail doesn't really matter. We just need to get paint on the model. And in the middle of the range with a big cup, there's the Patriot. So the first thing I'm going to do is put down a little poster tack. That is a trick I got from Tabletop Minions. 
if you want a good channel to follow for painting advice or just general gaming advice or honestly he's gotten to the point of really good life advice tabletop minions is fantastic so i'm going to get the camera all set up here and we're going to start spitting some paint so i like to use a black primer first just it gives a nice undercoat so that you know with zenithal, zenithal priming you want to go from a dark low to a light high especially for these carnivores uh, the black was definitely what was used by awakened realms and i'm going to try to keep that consistent i have a you know the patriot it uh, spits as much paint as it can you adjust the flow as much as you have to and it can take a little bit of time to get everything on there you want to tip the models around and do everything you can to try to get every nook and cranny with the black and the big reason I use the airbrush over a rattle can is the rattle can smells I don't like the smell of it it kind of gives me a headache and the airbrush is all water-based it doesn't have any smell after maybe an hour or so once it's all dried and I just prefer it you can also use it indoors uh, as you can see in my paint booth the skunk like stripe in the center is because there's a little vacuum on the other side of the booth and it sucks all the paint and other junk into it and uh, I can do it indoors where I live in California humidity and cold and all that aren't really much of a concern so I could do it with the rattle can but maybe you live in Minnesota and it's super cold right now and you can't go outside and the paint would freeze or whatever the case is um, I like this option the paint booth is really nice for me even though it's a little tiny you kinda get used to it and the light that it has on the little upper bar is pretty good one of the things that I have noticed about using this type of LED lighting is uh, it can be so harsh that it kinda makes you think you miss some of the colors so you have to use it under different lighting conditions. You got to get the underside of the model. It's the most important part. Even if all you did was tip it over like this and spray it on the bottom, that might be enough. But I like to get a nice even coat uh, just in case. So do this, all your models, spray, 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 turn, turn, turn. And that's basically the beginning of the Zenithal priming. Wait for a little while though. As you can see it's a little shiny there. It's wet. Give it like five ten minutes at a minimum. The more floor ugh, the more flow improver, not floor improver, but flow improver that you use, the wetter it's gonna be and it's gonna take a little extra time. But uh, it's okay, just wait and you can hit it with another coat. The airbrush does such a good job of giving a nice thin coat that you keep a lot of that detail and that's really why I went to getting an airbrush in the first place. When I first started painting I was trying to do zombicide stuff and it was glopping on. I couldn't get it thin enough right, you know, the, nothing seemed to work and I was getting really discouraged. Then I thought hey, let's atomize it. I'll uh, use a, an airbrush, just like when my dad, when I was a kid, he would uh, do his own paint jobs on the cars. And I was like, oh, I'll go to Harbor Freight. I'll pick up a uh, kit with a compressor, with a small, you know, junky Chinese cheap airbrush for about a hundred bucks. And the compressor eventually died, but after a year or so of using it pretty heavily and getting better with the airbrush. So uh, the biggest problem with that was the super cheap Harbor Freight uh, airbrush clogged a lot. Now that's not a big deal because every airbrush clogs. The issue is that if you get the cheap one, at least you'll learn how to fix it and you kind of get an idea of how it all goes together because there's so many 
ridiculously tiny parts, especially in the more expensive ones. You might not even be able to see them. You won't know that there's some kind of tricky valve and you just give it, a, you know, give the cheap one a shot if you're going to start out. It's not going to kill you or do anything bad. Just give it a shot. Eventually, I moved on to a California Airtool compressor, which has its own tank. I can go fill up my car with it. I can go up to hundreds of pounds of PSI. Usually, you're going to go like 20 to 30. But, hey, I can do it. And the tank means that the pressure doesn't go up and down as much as the constant use tankless air compressor that comes in the Harbor Freight Kit. So let's put these two together and you can see it looks pretty cool already, right? So maybe you like it, maybe you want more of that Xenomorph look and you can just keep it black, but that's not what we were going for. We were going for the uh, look of that blue trying to match a Drestia. Now you're going to keep doing that on all your models. They're all going to come out as close to black as possible. And then you got to go up to a mid-tone. So here I'm using a gray. This is coming out of the crescendo now and you can see it just dumps paint everywhere. Um, it wasn't going perfect right at the beginning. I had to clear out some old paint and then it's going to start to clear up as I kind of get towards the second coat. Now one thing that you have to keep in mind, it's going to look really bright right here, but the paint is going to change in color probably within the first hour, and it's going to get a lot darker. You may want to go to another coat, but I'm going to use this gray mid-tone, then we're going to try to match that blue, and then we'll go to a white highlight. If you're going to be doing this uh, with a different type of model, or you want to use it for a different technique, you go the black undercoat, move up to the gray midtone. The black undercoat, you would do it from directly underneath. The gray, you would kind of want to hit it from basically, uh, not necessarily parallel, perpendicular. That's the word I'm looking for. I got math skills. Anyway, perpendicular. And then when you do the highlight, you want to do it from around 30 degrees from the top or 60 degrees from that perpendicular plane and what that does is it kind of follows the way that the light would fall keeping in mind that the airbrush is super directional and so is the light so here I go I was like alright well got a clog fix it and uh, now I'm going back through and just kissing it you can see I'm coming out at a really high angle I'm giving it a few spritz um, what would be best, depending on the airbrush that you use, sometimes it'll have little speckles and other things. You gotta adjust the, uh, the airflow. To get the best tricks on using your airbrush, the, uh, the guys over at Next Level Painting, their YouTube channel, they're the best. They're the best at giving tips. And Miniac also was pretty cool and uh, that guy keeps you uh, pretty uh, involved and uh, he wakes up at 5 a.m. and paints his minis and heavy metal all the way and but all those guys are um, next level painting he does a lot of Warhammer stuff so if you're into that then uh, you know someone who's only been doing this for a year and a half like myself maybe you'll get uh, some more information out of him if you haven't heard about him before but uh, here we go, just cleaning up the last little bits of gray. And uh, you can see all of the models, the definition, even with just the black and the gray, it really comes out. And you wanna just keep going at it until everything looks smooth. If you're like me and you got a couple speckles at the beginning, it's okay, you just kinda go with it. Now, this paint job, the speckles make it look a little more organic especially the way that we're going to be doing the blue but uh, you may want to um, work on it a little bit and use some junk mail or whatever to get the 
bead perfect or the mix perfect if you're going to be doing something that it's not going to benefit from having um, the spray go in different different than ideal ways. Now the guy at Miniac, he, he did a breakdown of a bunch of different airbrushes and did a huge series on it. So I encourage you to go look and see what he's done and uh, make yourself a buying decision if you don't want to use one of the Badger models that I use. Or like I said, the Harbor Freight one. All right, so we'll move all these off and we're gonna get started on testing some colors. Before testing the color, uh, I reserved a couple models to kind of give a comparison to see where we're at. All right, so as you can see, the gray, the color's almost looking white right now, but it's gonna tone down just a bit. It's mainly from the harsh lighting. And we have the black, and we have the original Adrestia figure. So, you know, spin the table around a little bit. That's fine. And you can kind of see the... Uh, the detail popping out on the gray one and if you wanted to just go gloss black you totally could and make it more like the aliens franchise xenomorphs if that was your intention it's up to you i picked out a couple paints that i think are going to be close in color but i'm going to go ahead and shake them up first i use this uh, robo shaker from robart because it does such a better job than me doing it by hand I was getting entirely different colors after shaking it with the machine. I'm gonna try some Citadel paints, this Draken shade, Draken shade, Drakenhof, whatever nightshade. It's a dark blue. I'm using a uh, little dipper dropper thing. Uh, I'm gonna just put a drop and see how it looks on some junk mail. So uh, we'll see how it spreads. So I'm just gonna drag the. Uh, paint that was on the dropper get an idea of what it looks like see it's a dark blue just on some junk mail you're gonna throw it out anyway it was free so there we go hey there's our drop okay dark let's see how it compares against the Adrestia figure it's blue but it's not quite as green as the original so let's try something that's a different shade and see if we can get closer all right we're gonna try the soul stone blue it comes off a little glossier and it's a little bit lighter. I use the Drakenhof Nightshade typically for a dark denim and I use the Soulstone Blue for a light denim. All right, okay, so this is looking uh, a lot closer. It spread a, or spit a little bit of the, the dark blue out first from the last droplet. So we'll put a little around, see how that looks. It's closer in tone to the blue we need, but we need a little more green. So let's just give it a shot with another green. All right, we're gonna try another uh, Citadel green here. This one is Hex Wraith Flame. And all right, it might work. Let's uh, stick it in the brush there and uh, put it over top. Uh, it's pretty light, but once it mixes in, I think we got it kind of gives that turquoise uh, feel to it once they're all mixed together. Let's put the uh, model there. Okay, so you can see on the left, comparing the two, as long as the green is mixed down and thinned down, I think we're gonna be okay. So that's gonna be our mix. We're gonna go Soulstone Blue, and then we're gonna hit it with a weak green. Let's see what it's gonna look like. On um, the rest of my junk mail, I mixed uh, about three parts of the blue to one part of the green. And it looks all right. All right. And then, even though I did a test, I'm going to use the model that I have the most of, which are these little larvae, and we'll see how the test goes. All right. It's sticking, so that part's good. Uh, it's very blue at this point and that's to be expected. I didn't want to go too far into the green because I know it's gonna kind of wet blend itself um, once I pass over it again with the uh, super watered down dirty paint water as uh, Next Level Painting describes it, uh, the green. 
and that should bring all the little tones around. As you can see, it's not perfect, but I think we're close. And uh, we'll go to keep going to the next model, and maybe it'll look a little better. Here we go. Next one's up. Spin them around, and you'll notice I am going a little bit from the top, but mainly from that perpendicular, perpendicular, not perpendicular, perpendurp, uh, perpendicular angle. All right, so we've got a lot of that blue on there. The greens are starting to come in. Um, let's compare. I think it's a solid match there. As soon as that green started to mix in, I think I had some blue still in the uh, the tube from the the test, and that's what made the next test a little too much on the blue. So I'll come back at it. And this is another uh, model. Uh, and I shot him pretty heavy in the face on that one with the blue, but it's okay. Um, the poster tack, you see how it's lifting up like that? It can move quite a bit, but the poster tack helps hold it in place. And you can see how fast the crescendo is able to finish these models. I'm just going to go ahead and show you each and every one because uh, that was one of the ridiculous criticisms from that other channel. I'm saying, oh, this detail, blah, 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 blah. They look great. So I'm happy with what I bought and uh, I'm going to keep supporting Awaken Realms. And uh, you see, two, three, move it. Two, three, move it. Two, three, move it. That's all you got to do. Just spit that paint on there. Their crescendo will just gobble up and go through paint like nothing else. Um, so here we go. We've got another model type. All right. So here's a guy. And this is one of the reasons why they needed to change the bases. They changed everything during the campaign. Well, I guess post-campaign, technically. Um, in the way that they designed their models to make them more sturdy. And I appreciate that. Even though they're like, oh, it's rubble. They're on a spaceship, whatever. Yeah, but they're invaders. They broke into the spaceship. There's going to be some rubble. Why wouldn't they move up against it? I don't see any eyes. You ever uh, play Alien vs. Predator? They didn't exactly have great vision. Here's one of the big boys. There's only two of these, so uh, I, w I wouldn't be able to reserve uh, for the future parts of this video for you to be able to see all three. But uh, for the other ones, I was able to get most of uh, the uh, stages so you can see it in black, Zenithal, and uh, with the, uh, the painted stuff. You know what I mean. I'm not uh, a professional speaker or uh, anything like that, so you get me. All right, he, his head looks a little shiny right now. I'm going to give it some more of the uh, blue I'm not too worried about because I got to still hit it with the green and there's going to be white highlights after. Just want to kind of get the blue in the, the middle range of things and do some adjustments. This guy's a little crawly guy. Maybe in between the larval stage and the other ones. Um, but also terrifying to have something crawling around coming after you. Maybe the legs haven't fully developed or maybe they got blown off. Uh, just got the game yesterday so haven't been able to play it all the way through and get the names down. But uh, I will eventually. And I think I still have. Oh, yeah. All right. So the queen here. There's a lot going on. The, her body itself and her younglings. So you got to kind of think about the box that there's that's there. Try not to spray too much onto it and just get the paint on just your model. You look at her leg, you see how it came up much greener. I'm getting to the bottom of the cup and the green had mixed at the top, but it looks good. So what I'm going to go back and do, I'm filling the cup right now, adding some more blue and doing a new mix. All right, 
Now the new mix has a lot of blue but a little more green back in it and yeah see I'm just trying to get as much of her as possible but at the same time try not to overspray too much onto the box and you can see that black detail especially there on the arm still coming through don't get tricked by the gloss it's going to come down and you can see that green on the leg pretty much makes it perfect and yeah that crescendo and does it spit paint like crazy it's good all right so the next thing that I'm going to do is make green dirty paint water because as you can see the tones are almost spot on it's just a little bit more of the green especially on the head that uh, I need to go back and while it's wet kind of fill in uh, the little molecules of green will mix with the little molecules of blue and it'll be like a nice wet blend um, if I work quickly and that's what you see here hitting with that green just brings it up a little bit it's gonna look super glossy the LED lights are awesome they do reveal quite a bit uh, but they are harsh at the same time and can make things look extra glossy or I think the technical term is specularity um, can hide some issues so you want to look at these under much different types of light especially when it's dry okay so this guy was a little too blue coming back in with the green and you, you're just supposed to barely get a hint of it that's the intention of what I was doing right here it's sticking that's the important part and uh, it just gives that uh, slight taste of green back see looks pretty good it could be a little more green um, but I think mainly the difference that I'm seeing is the lack of the white on the overcoat so I'm gonna move on to the next one yeah you know fumbles them around a little bit the poster tax been uh, getting some paint on it so it wasn't too sticky just keep moving it around go as quickly as you can so this is a big batch job and normally I would do all of the models at once and uh, try to get as much done as I can but for demonstration purposes later I'm only going to be doing one of each uh, on this stage and I'll have to go back in and hit the rest of them yeah see real quick just that touch of green just a little kiss that's all it needed and we go back to our closest to the original model get in there make sure that the tail gets a little bit of that paint uh, there's a lot of little nodules and keep in mind how directional the whole thing is um, you really do kind of have to rotate on your uh, your y-axis or z-axis I guess and then uh, try to change the levels that that green is going to hit in because it's not just a highlight green or mid-tone green or a shadow it's kind of a color for all of them it just gives a little extra flavor and that should be pretty much everybody I'm gonna do the uh, little guy uh, off camera one more comparison just to see if we got it yeah so you can see there's some white that is on the model but I think we got the colors right let's give it a spin and you can see I'll show you the other model I know it's not the exact same model on this one but we're just hey it was on the table we're gonna look at it real quick there you go now it's like the other one the models are slightly different as you can see the tail orientation sitting on the uh, the base is a little different but uh, I think that's cool we're gonna hit it with the white now uh, the head especially needs that uh, extra highlighting and I believe will give us pretty much a perfect look uh, as far as the way sun drop is I know it's a proprietary process and you can make a decision on your own as if you want to use this or something different but uh, I just kinda wanted to keep my 
Awaken Realms products as similar as possible and uh, you know it's my table I'll do whatever I want if you want some inspiration take a look at that huh looks good right It'll look basically the same obviously the spray patterns are going to be slightly different but the colors are good and that's how it looks so we're gonna go ahead and start on the rest of the models for this type of work you definitely don't want to use a crescendo like I was using to spit the uh, mid-tones and the primers on even though I am using a white primer right here if you had a different white that you like that works well in the airbrush you could but I'm gonna use my velocity jet and I'm using very little paint to do the whole series. I've used the Vallejo primer a lot and I can tell you it works but it's no different than any other primer especially when you come down to clogging every white primer clogs. It's one of the reasons I like the Velocity Jet it seems to clog the least of any of the uh, airbrushes I've got and you can see I'm almost doing this in real time you know taking out some camera adjustments or whatever but uh, and I'm gonna tell you right now there's a little bit of uh, what looks like plastic lens flare or whatever on the top that's because it is I wrapped the lens in plastic I don't spend hundreds to thousands of dollars on a camera and get paint all over it you're spraying paint cover the thing up there's lots of different options I took the wrapper of uh, some plastic card sleeves because I'm not wasting my money and using the actual sleeve I used the plastic wrapper it came in and took a rubber band and shoved it over the lens and it's been a pretty good uh, barrier so here we go we get these guys again and you can see like I said real time BAM hit it in the face and just the tops of areas normally if I wasn't doing this on camera I'd have a little more ability to uh, just hit it from the top but the camera's kind of in the way um, and also because of the sun drop effect not being a true zenithal just highlighting the top kind of look there's some white in the middle um, I just am not doing that one thing you'll see I'm trying to hit the white a lot on the bases just to try to clean up the bases and get some of the blue off of it uh, you don't have to do that that's totally you know just me doing that trying to make it more consistent so that the figure stands out more from the base I'm probably gonna go in with uh, some like gunmetal metallic and dry brush the tops of the uh, the bases just to make them look more like uh, grates on a ship here we go more cleaning base more cleaning base blah 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 and I had gone back and just grab some of the models that I already uh, did the highlighting with just to try to clean up the base. I think if you actually get the sun drop, uh, I don't know if it, I'm pretty sure you're, it was available for the Carnomorphs expansion, which maybe is a wave two thing. They also hit them with uh, some blood. I may wait until after everything comes in from wave two to uh, finish these guys up. Right now, looks really good to me. Uh, I didn't have a problem with the sun drop. Some people would say, oh, they didn't like it because basically that's what this is, this is Zenithal. But, um, and they didn't like the way that it looked because it wasn't super crazy detailed. These guys are doing tens of thousands at a time. And there's no time to go in and unfortunately, uh, try to give your particular mini you know the the love you would give it which is why I'm doing this here so um, as you can see in real time right now the video is about 35 minutes long if you're fully set up I don't know you'd probably be at about an hour of real time um, if uh, you're doing this yourself it's super fast you do have to let things dry but because there's so many of them miniatures 
uh, you should be having plenty of time. And here we go. There's the larva, and uh, you can see how that looks. It's not bad. Looks okay. Don't really need to go back and hit the green. Now we'll just go through and give everyone a turn. There is the complete plastic next to the black, next to the gray Zenithal only, and then we give it a little bit of the blue with the white highlights. So a couple turns on the larva, and you can make a decision if you know if it's worth the effort for you to do it. For me, I like the way Lords of Hellas looked, so uh, I think I'm going to continue it. Different angle of the uh, little crawly guys. To me, these are the nightmare fuel. Um, the just things crawling on the ground or on the ceiling or wherever they're coming from. It's the most uh, scary to me. But uh, yeah, look at that. With the harsh light, you can see kind of how uh, gloss black if you wanted to just use gloss black would look. And if you want to watch something interesting, the box set for the Alien Anthology has, it's the Blu-ray, has this um, crazy amount of interviews with H.R. Giger when he was talking about his inspirations for the Alien look. And uh, the guy's drunk, obviously. I don't know if it was wine. I don't know if he, if it's all the wine he's ever had and he just caught up with him or if it was just on the day, but it's uh, pretty interesting to listen to him. I will say though, all the trigger warnings on the things he has to say, they, um, they were not uh, too kind in those days and uh, didn't think of a lot of the things that people think of now about their movies and stories. Um, the real reason why the xenomorphs, you know, go down your throat and all the other stuff. Wow. It's, uh, it's pretty nuts. So there's two and the same thing on these guys. I only had the two. So you get one painted with the sun drop, fake sun drop, and one with the basic base plastic. So you can make a decision, hey, if it's worth it, not worth it, uh, depending on uh, your tastes. I'm not going to judge you. Finally, Big Mad Mama. So she's in some type of uh, metal box enclosure thing. Might make that uh, metallic or do some type of browns, make it look like a crate, you know, a space crate whatever they would use in the future. Probably wouldn't be brown, but we think of crates now brown, so connotatively uh, give that impression. And there's lots of uh, interesting armor on her and possibly soft spots that, you know, those spikes that come out of her head and the thing that kind of looks like a crown. And I know it's a little weird to go from all that painted stuff to what was obviously this uh, folded paper thing, but it's what came in Adrestia. It's what introduced Nemesis. And uh, I gotta give it some credit. You know, it, it inspires. The blues looked really cool. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint, matching the uh, picture here as closely as I could. And, uh, you know, if you wanna see more, feel free to drop some comments, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. As I said in the. Uh, description. You click on read more. All of the Amazon links to everything you would need to do exactly what I've done is sitting in there. Um, if you as well find one of the other content creators to no longer be to your liking, you know, let them know. And if they don't change, you know, make your own, right? That's what's uh, great about YouTube is you can make your own stuff if you want to. And uh, I hope that Awaken Realms is uh, fully successful and keeps doing great work and keeps getting better because everything I've seen from them continues to get better and better. Have a good one.